It was late at night, but Rogue wasn't in bed. She liked Professor X's school, the classes and the students, but she was frightened. She wanted to see Logan. She went quietly into his room. Suddenly, Logan woke up from one of his terrible dreams. He didn't think. There was no time to think. The claws came out of his hands. They went right through Rogue's body. No! he cried. Their eyes met. Logan looked at his claws. He thought, Rogue is going to die. His claws went back, but it was too late. Help us! Logan shouted. The teenager put her hand on his face. She needed to do this. There was no other way. Logan's eyes opened in pain and surprise. His power started to go into Rogue. That was her power. When she touched people, she took their power. When the other X-Men arrived, Logan was almost dead. Rogue looked at the others. I'm sorry, she said. Senator Kelly was very frightened. His body was different now because of Magneto's machine. Every day, it was more and more like water. I must get out of here, he thought. The room was in a very tall building, with water all around it. He looked out through the bars on his window. His head went easily through the bars, and his body followed quickly after. He started to move down the wall, but suddenly Magneto saw him. What did you do to me? shouted Kelly. Magneto smiled. You are one of us now, a mutant. Who is going to help you? Sabretooth tried to take Kelly's hand, but it wasn't possible. Kelly's body was in the air, and then suddenly, splash! Kelly was in the water. Rogue sat alone in the school gardens. Was Logan okay? She didn't know. A student called Bobby came to her. He was a teenager too, and Rogue liked him. What happened with you and Logan? said Bobby. Never use your power against other mutants. You don't understand, started Rogue, but Bobby didn't listen. Leave here, he said. The students are frightened. Professor X is angry. Just go. Rogue looked at him sadly. He was right. She must go. She must always be alone. Where's Rogue? asked Logan. He was okay now because of his power to heal his body. Professor X looked into his own mind. I can't feel her, he said. She isn't in the school. He went to a small door. The computer by the door looked into his eyes with a special beam. Hello, Professor X, it said. The door opened and he went into a big room. Logan followed. This machine is Cerebro, said Professor X. With Cerebro, my power is very strong. I can use it to find Rogue. Why not use it to find Magneto? asked Logan. Because Magneto knows Cerebro. He made it with me a long time ago. When Logan left, Professor X put a special helmet on his head. Cerebro started to work, and he saw lights all around him. Th Thousands of lights. Each light was a person, and they were all mutants. Professor X had a difficult job, to find Rogue out of all those mutants. But his mind was strong. Very strong with Cerebro's help. There, he saw her. She's at the train station, he told the X-Men outside. Storm and Cyclops, go and find her, please. 
but Logan was already on his way. Logan took Cyclops' motorbike and arrived very quickly at the station. Rogue was already on a train. Logan sat down next to her. I'm sorry about last night, he said quietly. Me too. Are you running away again? It's for the best. Professor X is angry with me, said Rogue. Logan didn't understand. Who said that? Bobby watched as the other students walked away. When no one was around, he went to a different part of the school, to Cerebro. Then Bobby started to change. His eyes went yellow and his body went blue. It was Mystique, not Bobby. She went to the door and changed again. Now she had Professor X's face. The computer used its special beam. Hello, Professor X it said. The door opened and Mystique went inside. Now it was easy for her to work on Cerebro.